Mitosis happens in my toes, <laughs> or what we call a somatic cell. All right, so we're gonna be following mitosis in this video, looking at a cell that has four chromosomes in it uh, as it divides into two cells that will be identical to each other. So this cell is a, a diploid cell. Right? It has two of each type of chromosome. So we are gonna keep this simple. All right, we're gonna have one short yellow, one short red. So those are going to be similar chromosomes. Then we have one long yellow and one long red uh, sitting inside of our beautiful nucleus. <laughs> so um, our cell right now is being represented by the white paper uh, and the green is the nuclear envelope that's going to be in it. So right now this cell is in its quote unquote resting state, uh, which means it's in interface. Uh, currently it is in a gap one phase of interface. Uh, the cell could choose to stay here forever. It's just kind of doing whatever the cell needs to do. If it's your big toe, skin on your big toe, right? It's acting as a protective layer. If it's a cell that's in your liver, it's storing things like glycogen, right? So the cell will potentially be doing cellular respiration or photosynthesis if it's a plant, right? This is its kind of normal everyday life. Uh, if this cell gets the signaling to move into mitosis, it will go from gap one into the S phase or what's called the synthesis phase. So during the synthesis phase, we're gonna take our four single chromosomes and our cell's gonna replicate it. So littles get their pairs bigs get their pairs and we now have a jumble of dna right we have still have four chromosomes um, but if you will notice uh, they are four duplicated chromosomes or four chromosomes in their duplicated form state Dep state whatever uh depending on who you talk to you, you will know. say this a different way yes we've had this conversation in that we all say things a little bit different and unfortunately there isn't one consistent consensus on how we talk about chromosomes when they are in their duplicated state where they consist of two sister chromatids there are some people who would just say, oh look, there's still four chromosomes. They wouldn't even say that they're duplicated and that confuses me. So I okay. always say that they are duplicated chromosomes. Uh, it makes my life a little easier. So during the synthesis phase, your one chromosome is duplicated into a pair, all right, into their matching what we call sister chromatids. So this okay, is one duplicated chromosome that is made up of two sister chromatids. So one piece of DNA attached to the other piece of DNA. Um, they're attached in the center and that is one chromosome. And again, remember if you've hopefully read through the lab, we are in interphase. Interphase has three sort of subphases, gap one, synthesis, which we're talking about right now, and now gap two, which Marsha will continue to explain. <laughs> Your gap two is going to be where the cell's basically preparing for mitosis. Once you get to gap two, you have to keep going, right? There's no going back, right? The cell can't continue to rest here. It's gonna continue into what we call the mitotic phase, which we're gonna be looking at here. Um, and we're gonna pay a little bit close attention to the nucleus. Because remember the nuclear envelope in eukaryotes, uh, DNA can't go through it, right? So if we're gonna try to split this thing we're gonna have to get rid of the nucleus so as we go from gap one into prophase what's going to happen one the DNA is gonna to start to like condense up on itself, which is hard to demonstrate with beads. Um, but the DNA is gonna kind of coil up around the proteins and it is going to uh, be condensing. So you can actually see it, right? Underneath the microscope, it kind of, it looks like worms to me. That's it what does. I've always <laughs> It does. It looks like worms. In interphase, the DNA looks very much like a uh, ball of yarn. There's really, it's very difficult to see individual chromosomes. But as you move into prophase of the mitotic phase, chromosomes become easier to see. You can see the strands a little bit easier um, in some cells. Again, you can take a look in your lab book. There are images of prophase and metaphase, prometaphase, all of those. So I, we would urge you to, to take a look at some of those images of real life cells as well as we're going through this. So as we move from prophase, right, one of the things that is happening is the nuclear envelope starts to break apart. Are you going to try to do this? Yes, I am. All right. Oh, so it starts to break apart because remember, it's just a membrane, right? So we can break apart into little pieces uh, and those are going to start to disappear. Um, then 
then it will move into pro metaphase. Now during pro metaphase, there's not a whole lot more going on. Basically, it just finishes pro phase. Uh, it is the phase that they've kind of added in in the past few years to say like pro phase doesn't do it all, right? right? So nuclear envelope totally disappeared. All the pieces are shoved in different places so that the cell can work um, to do different things later, all right? We can reform these membranes later. Uh, and in pro metaphase, we start to see two um, structures um, migrate around the cell, all right? So we have these little centrosomes. All right, centrosomes are going to migrate to the poles. We're going this way. Oh, we're going this way. We're going this way. We got to go this way this time. Oh, yep. Okay. Um, so, and the poles. So these are the poles of the cell. Um, I often refer to the whole cell as like a big round earth, right? So this is like the North Pole and the South Pole. Uh, so the centrosomes are going to be structures that are, are on either side of the cell during our process of mitosis. Then on those centrosomes, you're going to start to see the spindle fibers start to form, right? So spindle fibers are proteins that are going to be attached to the centrosome, and they are also then going to be attaching to our chromosomes. So as we move from pro-metaphase into metaphase, the chromosomes start Start to line up along the metaphase plate. That is basically coordinated by these spindle fibers. So we're going to use these cute little green pipe cleaners to rep represent these um, spindle fibers. And what will happen is that the chromosomes will start to get pulled to the center of our cell along what is often compared to the equator. Uh, so this is called the metaphase plate right along the center. So the spindle fibers are going to be making this happen, right? So all of these pipe cleaners are going to be, again, facilitating this very coordinated dance of our chromosomes. So you'll notice that our duplicated chromosomes are still together in metaphase, okay? So this is metaphase. Uh, and then what will happen as we transition into anaphase is that these spindle fibers are going to get shorter. Uh, as they shorten, they're actually going to pull apart our sister chromatids. So for um, simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna do this. Yep. Okay, spindle fibers, they're still there, right? But then what happens is we pull apart the sister chromatids, we take our duplicated chromosomes and we create single chromosomes, All right? So now we have two distinct sex. So in anaphase, the sister chromatids separate apart from each other, All right? We end up with, on either side of the cell, All right, one long red, one short yellow, one long yellow, and one short red. Okay, now magnets are making this hard, but they're really not connected to each other, right? Uh, so during anaphase, we pull them apart. Then during telophase, we start to get ready for two cells to happen. So during this time, especially for, I say, basically any cell, right, we'll start to elongate, which I also cannot do in my really awful bad animation world. All right, so we're gonna elongate this cell, and if we're talking about an animal cell, we will actually start to see an indentation on either their side. That's called the cleavage furrow. That furrow is going to um, kind of allow for the cell to go through uh, cytokinesis. If this is a plant cell, there will actually be a cell plate that will form right in the center because remember the plant has to make a whole new cell wall on either side uh, here in order to create two cells. So during anaphase into telophase, like all of this is kind of happening at the same time. And then our chromosomes are gonna start to each get their own nucleus. So as we move into telophase, each nucleus is going to start to form. As we finish that, the full cytokinesis will happen and we will end up with two distinct cells. Also notice that they are both identical to each other, right? They both have the short yellow, the long yellow, the long red, and the short red. So they are identical and they're still diploid, meaning they have two copies of each. Now in humans, that would mean we have 46 full chromosomes in each side. Um, I just can't do that with beads. This was chaotic enough. <laughs> like, that would be way, have to way, work on that. way too many beats. Look for that sometime. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not happening. Maybe after we retire. We're never retiring. <laughs>